Hello beautiful people, I'm Aaron with Man Candy Creations and you're watching Garage Fab. You know, needing a tool and not having it sucks, but being able to make tools definitely does not suck. Today I want to help you make a piston ring filer. If you're just joining Garage Fab, I'm frantically trying to grow my face back while overhauling my wife's Mitsubishi Mighty Max. In episode two, we started the rebuild on a turbo 4G63 engine. Unfortunately, we had some issues with some piston rings I ordered. To bring you up to speed, the piston ring's purpose is to create a tight seal against the cylinder walls, the way a rubber plunger does inside a syringe but since rubber would burn up in an engine cylinder, metal rings are used instead. The rings I ordered were too small, which makes the gaps at the end of the ring too large. End gap is really important to get right because an improper gap could potentially cause all kinds of issues. A gap that's too large could allow air to escape past the rings, lowering cylinder compression and therefore decrease power. Air that passes the rings can also up the pressure in your crankcase, which could cause oil leaks at seals and potentially push oil into the intake through the PCV system, causing smoke and oil consumption. There's even a chance of oil passing the rings and burning up in the combustion chamber. More smoke, more oil loss. So it's important to make your ring gap as small as possible. But wait, if a small gap is better than a big gap, wouldn't no gap be even better? In theory, yes, but the gap itself is important for a couple reasons. First of all, having an open ring allows you to put the ring on the piston and take it off for replacement. Also, the opening in the ring lets the ring act like a spring, pushing itself tight against the walls of the cylinder. And because it's spring-like, the ring can adapt to changes inside the cylinder. What kind of changes? When metal gets hot, it swells. That means your pistons get a little fatter. The cylinder walls start to close in a little and even the rings themselves expand. You can't see those small changes, but a piston ring that can't change size would. The clearances would get so tight, the piston would eventually seize in the cylinder. The engine would explode and kill everyone. All right, maybe not, but you'd need a new motor for sure. So there's a science to the ring gap that the manufacturers have all figured out. They know how much expansion is going to happen inside the motor and how much their rings will expand. And so they provide you with the perfect ring gap that will nearly completely close as the engine heats up. In my first set of rings, the gap was too large. So I ordered rings the next size up, knowing that these rings would give me not enough gap. And since you can't order custom rings, I have to fine tune them myself. How? With a ring gap filer. There's a lot of options out there for ring gap filers. There's some cheap manual ones and some not so cheap fancy ones. I considered getting a cheap one because I've never needed one before and I may never need one again. But then I decided to buy neither of them. I found out it would take over three weeks to ship. I got a YouTube channel to run. I think I've got enough crap laying around to make one. Now looking at photos of filers, they look pretty dang simple. They look like tiny table saws. There's a little table and a blade and two stops for the rings to rest on. We got this. I am super lazy, so this thing is definitely not going to be manual. I considered using my Dremel with a small cutoff wheel attached, but I was having a hard time coming up with a way to attach a table. That's when I realized that my $20 Harbor Freight grinder, and any grinder for that matter, has a threaded hole on each side for the handle. That gives me a place to mount a table and a way to mount the grinder solidly in my vise. I just happen to have this long eye bolt laying around with the right thread. The benefits of being a hoarder. I'm gonna use a lock nut to tighten it up so that I'm not forcing the bolt too far on the hole. I love these grinders, 
but this metal feels like not the greatest quality. Now that I'm thinking about it, just using the grinder handle wrapped in a towel and lightly clamped in the vise would have worked fine. To make the tabletop, I'm going to use this half inch thick flat stock I have sitting in my scrap bin. It's way thicker than necessary, but I'm going to countersink a tapered bolt into it so the top of our table is flush. I don't want the head of a bolt sticking up where the piston ring needs to lay flat. I imagine some eighth inch plate would be plenty sturdy, but you'd likely need some washers underneath to make the table equal or greater the size of the bolt's tapered head, or you won't be able to tighten it down fully. Attaching the table to the grinder is that simple. Now we need to make a slot in the table for the blade. I can't find my metal ruler, so hopefully this business card will work. I just need something to clamp into the grinder where the blade will be so I can scribe a line on the table. Now that that's done, I can cut the slot in the table. I'm going to cut until the blade sticks out on the other side, just enough to grind a piston ring, and then a little more so the wheel doesn't bind when I tighten down the table. Let's do a test fit to make sure everything works. It's throwing some sparks here because there's not a lot of clearance for the blade, but hopefully that'll die down as it runs a bit. All that's left is the stops for the piston rings to rest against. The stops are there to ensure you're trimming each end of the ring at the same angle. I'm gonna drill a pair of holes perpendicular to the blade slot and tap them for some Allen head bolts, and it'll be time for the moment of truth. I've never done this before, but it seems like it's working really, really well. I'm going to adjust the gaps on the whole set of rings and finally get these pistons permanently installed. friends, there's a bit of a jump in time here. I put in the first piston and I immediately noticed something just wasn't right. The piston was just way too tight in the cylinder. I could barely move it by hand. Suddenly I wasn't in the mood for filming and I just wanted to figure out what was happening. So I removed all the rings and added them one by one to find out what the deal was. Top ring, perfect. Add the second ring, still perfect. Add the oil rings, eh, less than perfect. 
It turns out the oil ring grooves in the pistons aren't deep enough for these rings and it causes the oil rings to stick out too far. That's when I started doing some research and I found this. Will Wiseco rings fit my OEM piston? For those that don't know, OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer. In other words, factory made parts. Wiseco rings and pistons are specifically designed and engineered to work together and do not interchange with the OEM parts in most instances. Wow, that would have been fantastic to know the first two times I bought them. So that's that. An extra hundred dollars down and I still don't have piston rings. STM tuned never responded to my request to return the first set of rings. So I'm kind of losing hope there. And the second set is now modified. So those are garbage. All right. I'm done whining. It's still a good day because I'm still breathing. I'm running out of things I can do without an engine. So I think I'm going to have to move on to the rear of the truck. How does shortening a rear axle sound? If you're interested, hit the subscribe button and I'll be back soon. And though sometimes it's really, really hard and it seems like everything is trying to hold you back, Keep moving forward.